Hi there, and welcome to On the Couch with Fouch. I'm the host, Matt Fouch, and you guys are here because you love getting to know your favorite Southern Gospel music artist. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you're watching on Facebook, like, comment, share, like the, the page that is sharing this video. And if you want to, go to mattfouch.com, sign up for the email so that you get the email every month when I release a new interview. Well, today, I have a very special guest for you guys. This is Amber Nealon with me. Hi. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. I've never been on this show before. I've just watched everybody else be on it. <laughs> so who, okay, so you've watched it. So who, I, every time someone says, yeah, I've watched it. So who's your favorite one that you've seen so far? I think Josh Singletary. Wasn't that fun? <laughs> that was a lot of fun. He, he did the bow tie for me. Oh, yeah. Got me he's all really set up good and good to go. Yeah. He's, he's like, that's his thing is the bow ties, you know. Awesome. <laughs> so you'll want to go today and absolutely check that interview out and, mm -hmm. um, Definitely do. <laughs> they will enjoy it, right? Oh, you will laugh your head off. Definitely. And we and we look so much, we look so similar in, in a lot of ways, but in other yeah. ways we don't. But especially when we have the glasses on. Oh and, yeah. And everything. And if when he put that bow tie on me, I was like, brother. <laughs> it's like we were related You're all twins. of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, a lot of the questions that came in for the interview when I told everybody on social media I was interviewing you, a lot of the questions came in on family and history of the Neelands and kind of all that. So give the folks a rundown of the Neelands, the history of the family and in and, and the music and all that. Okay, well my grandfather is Rex Neeland and he started with the Lefevers a long, long time ago. And uh, when the Lefevers were on the road, they were there for about 20 years and they were a group for 20 years and then they decided to come off the road. Even Mae Lefevre, most of you probably remember her. And um, when they came off the road, my grandfather decided to kind of keep it going, but he wanted his own group, and it was always his dream to have his own family group. And so he took on the Lefevers. Of course, they changed the name to the Rex Nealon Singers, and the first group was my grandfather, Rex, Janet Paschal, my mom, Kelly Nealon, and Rodney Swain. And wow. then that was the Rex Nealon Singers, and that started in 1977. And then from there, it's just kind of evolved. Um, we've had Karen Peck in the group. She sang soprano with the Neelands for 10 years. So I call her Aunt Karen. Right. She's not, she's family. Charlotte uh, Ritchie was here for a while. Really? Yeah. I, did, I actually Stan didn't Whitmire know that. Wow. was our piano player for 10 years as well. So Stan's family. Um, there's a lot of people that are in this industry now that were really with us before they were ever in anything on their own. <laughs> wow. But now the group cool. consists of um, my mom, her husband, Jason, and my sister, Autumn, and myself. And that's the four of us. And so, so now uh, it's all family. Instead now it's of all family. Yeah. People from different it's different all families family. all coming together. Yep. All family, Maybe. all fights. <laughs> okay. So leading up with that, uh, I knew this was coming. <laughs> the, Denise Young, actually, thank you, Denise, for the question. She, yes. Her question is the best thing and most challenging thing uh, about growing up, you know, in a singing family and being on the road with your family. Well, you know, you have 45 feet to get away if you ever need your own space and your this own you know own little private quiet time because sometimes you just i'm a, so i'm not really a loner i'm a social butterfly but there are times where i get to so many people because with what we do we're around people constantly and we have to be around people constantly. Right. but you need time for yourself and really the only place you can go is your bunk <laughs> to have time for yourself mm -hmm. you know you just get in your bunk close your curtain but um i think that's the most challenging thing the the best part about drive traveling with my family would be that because we're a family when we go on longer trips or if we want to stop anywhere, we don't really have to ask anybody, you guys want to do this? Are you okay? It's just like, no, we're going, you know, so I love that. You know, we're very adventurous. We, um, if we go to Florida, we're going to stop at Disney world. It doesn't matter where we're at in Florida. We're going to stop in Disney world and there are no questions asked. It does not matter who's on the bus. We're going to Disney world. <laughs> and so so that's, just so you know, if you ever have to ride along with the Neelands and you're going to Florida, guess where you're going. You're going to Disney. Save up your money because you're going to Disney World. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Connor Bost, you mentioned your grandfather yes. uh, earlier, and so Connor Bost wants to know what is your favorite memory oh. of your grandfather Rex? I think my favorite memory um, of my granddaddy was when I was little. Um, I was learning to read and write, and I couldn't really write very well. I was still in school learning how to do all this. My grandfather loved like crossword puzzles and any kind of like hidden word puzzles. That was just his thing. He would get on the bus and he would get these little books that I guess he found in gas stations and he would, you know, have his little can of milk. He had like this thing of condensed milk that he drank. I don't know why. He liked it. People drink that stuff. I don't. 
And then he had combos. Do you know what combos oh, yeah, are? Yeah. The pretzels with the cheese Which, inside. Was it just the original or was it like the pizza flavor? No, 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 no. It was the, the pretzels with the, the cheese. Just the original, okay. Yeah, he liked the original combos. And sometimes he would get a block of cheese. It was so and weird. add it to the combos? Yeah, he, was, okay. he just was weird like that. He ate that kind of stuff. What a snack. I know. But um, he uh, he had these little puzzles, and he would have me look for the words, and then he would come up with these little words, and he would write them um, incorrectly on purpose to see if I would figure them out. And so he kind of taught me like how to write and how to read. And even though I was in school, I really probably learned more from him because he just every single night that was our thing. We did it together, hmm. and he would teach me these little things. And um, and then he would have me sing all these different songs. We'd get on the bus, and he would say, "Do you know this song?" And I'd say, "No, Granddaddy." And he'd teach it to me. And then the next day, he goes, "Do you remember our song?" No, granddaddy. Okay, well, let's sing it again. And until I learned a hymn or whatever it was, he would keep rehearsing it with me until I had it in my memory. And I, wow. I knew it for my own. So those are my favorite memories with him, our one-on-one -on -one time. And, and it's good. And now it's good training because mm -hmm. now you get to an event and it's always, it, there's always that moment pretty much every night where it's like, yeah, you just come on up here and you come on. And you oh, don't know yeah. what song you're doing, but... You know, now you know the songs and, and everything. So that if right. they pick a popular one, you're like, well, I know the song. I... Yeah, if you ever sing with Bill Gaither, get ready. Because <laughs> you'll be called at any given time. And you better know it. <laughs> and so the part that you sing is? The just, soprano. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, Harmony uh, Self, thank you for your question, Harmony. Harmony. She wants to know, what is your best tip for sustaining a high note? Oh, I think my best tip would have to be, and I learned this the hard way, um, if you are a high singer, and if, if you're a tenor singer or a soprano singer and you sing all those notes, sometimes we stay up here constantly. We don't ever really come down here that much. But if you do, I learned from vocal training to not always do it. We have a thing called chest voice and then we have a thing called head voice. Some people don't understand that. But you don't ever want to just push it up here with your chest voice all the time. And if you do, it's really going to damage your vocal cords. So I've had to learn to switch a lot, you know, to head voice. But you don't know much about that because you're a bass singer. So you don't understand anything I'm saying. We, your tenor use, singer does. We use a technique. <laughs> we use techniques. You do but use yeah, techniques. It's probably a little different. It is yeah. a little different. You know, you have to switch because... With us, we're always up there. We're always right. singing the high notes. And sometimes it's very straining on your vocal cords. So I've had to learn to just, um, as we call it, let it ride for a little bit mm -hmm. where I'm not pushing as much and then save what um, what I do have for like power ballads and things like that. Yeah, and then for I, moments. Right, for moments. And not that they all don't matter. It's just that some you want to give a little bit more than others would, you know, not yeah. push yourself so hard. Well, so. especially in, when, when someone comes up, a bass singer comes up to me and he says, man, I want to sing, and you know, they go to this thing, and they say, well, do you have any tips? One of the things I always say to them is, is learn to know when the moment is for you to sing your low stuff. Right. Because if you just sing low stuff all night, then it just kind of, it becomes it's not routine. special. It's, it's right? not, yeah, it's not something that It's like that dive was, bombing on every single song. Exactly. You know? So I'm just kind of like, you need to just sit back. And, and blend with the guys you sing with. That's it, exactly. People love to hear a good male quartet blend, and then they want to hear you a few times a night go hit a low note. Right. So instead of just singing every low note you possibly can, blend with the guys you're singing with and mm -hmm. try to sound good with them right. and then sing a few. And I would imagine it's kind of the same kind of concept, especially when someone else is singing. You're just wanting to, you're wanting to blend. You're wanting to kind of sit back. Yeah. And then on those moments when you need a little something special, then you have that to give to it. Right. Because as a group, it's a team effort. You know, you work yeah. as one. And my grandfather was a lot like you are. You know, he learned to blend. He wasn't the lowest of bass singers, but he was very smooth and he blended with the group. He knew his place. And he did the low notes when he needed to, but it was never like he was a show off. He never mm -hmm. tried to just, okay, I'm going to dive bomb right here. I'm going to do this. Right. He just learned how to blend and he taught every singer. It wasn't just him. Every singer was the same way in whatever range they were in. And yep. um, it's very important because it's good for the program and it's good mm -hmm. for your songs and it just sounds better. <laughs> right. And it's saving you. For and it's those saving moments. your yeah. voice. Yeah. So Pat Barker. He, Pat Barker. Yeah. He pretty much <laughs> asks a question for everybody. Oh, I'm sure and he does. I only throw a few in there every now and then. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants to know if you were a character in Steel Magnolias, which oh would it goodness. be? I don't even know that I know the character names, but whoever Dolly Parton was, that'd probably be who I was. Okay. I don't know what her name is, but I liked her character in the movie. She was hilarious. She was hilarious. She was a little social butterfly. She was friendly to everybody. 
you know, that, that'd be me. There you go, Pat. There you uh, go. Sam it's a Cam. Weird question, but Sam okay. Cam had some people mention Sam that. Sam Cam. Yeah. What, you know, what's up with Sam? What is it? And, uh, and where did it come from? Sam Cam is our little dachshund and he has, he, I mean, he has his own show. So, okay. you know, he's got his own show. Maybe and, you should have uh, brought him then too. Well, he right. bites. Okay. So. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have worked <laughs> yeah. out too Not well. good. No. Um, yeah, he has his own little reality show. It, you know, it kind of was an accident how this all happened, but we started videotaping him and he talks. He talks to people. He interviews them and talks to them just like you. I know. You have to go watch it. Look it up on YouTube. It's called The Sam Cam Show. Interesting. It is very interesting. <laughs> Trust me. We get bored on the bus, okay? <laughs> Don't judge me. I can see you judging me I'm right like, now. Okay. <laughs> he, uh, we get bored so our animals start <laughs> talking. <laughs> we love Disney. Everything talks. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> Good point. So yeah, it's it, you just have to go look it up on YouTube. It's hard to explain, but I promise once you watch it, you will you'll be addicted to you'll it. You'll fall in love with it. You will. You'll fall in love with it. <laughs> Casey Johnson would like to know if you had won American Idol, would you have stayed in gospel music? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I would have stayed in gospel music. Um, I probably would have branched out a little more to a contemporary feel, but I would never leave my roots ever. I mean, this is this is what raised me. This is what um, made me who I am today, and this is what my grandfather helped start. I would never leave my roots of Southern gospel, but I would always I always try to tell people, don't ever put yourself in a box, because if you do that, you're very limited. And right. um, you know, I just let God open doors as He see fit, and I'll just walk through them. There you go, Casey. Yeah, that's a, Casey. a excellent question. Um, now, I want to do something I, I haven't done much of in interviews. Oh. I want to do a little word association. And so I want you to just kind of say whatever is the first thing that comes to mind when I say <laughs> okay. a, this, this word like or, the, or, this, or this phrase. <laughs> and so good luck with this. Okay. And, and it's, it's uh, for the most part, it's, it's you know, related to, right. to gospel music. So it's not right. anything crazy. Okay. So I'm ready. when I say the word quartet, first thing that comes to mind. Legacy five. Is that just I mean, I'm here with you, right. so I okay. mean, it comes to mind. You okay, know? good answer. Yeah, Legacy see, five. I know how it works. Check us out. You know, we're, we're, we just love singing and right. come see us in concert. Legacy five. Yeah, Legacy five never gets a plug on this. It's always really? whoever I'm interviewing. I yeah. am shocked. Yeah, you should be weird. promoting your so, own group. So, NQC. Busy. <laughs> I think of busy great, yes, when absolutely. I think of NQC. Not really for the viewers or the mm -hmm. fans, but really for us. I don't think they realize how busy we actually are. We don't ever stop yeah. at NQC, but we love it. We yeah. love it because it's, it's our one week, week of just go 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 go, and then when you get home, it's crash. Yeah. Yeah. But at night when we're all done, I think of it as summer camp because all of us who don't ever get to see each other, we kind of like hang out. Like last night, we played cornhole for like four hours. <laughs> wow. We had like a tournament, and it was a lot of fun. And just let me throw it out, Danny Riley and I, we were beat by the clock and we had bad referees, but tonight we had revenge. So that's all I'm going to say about that. A little uh, NQC say. style cornhole. You're hmm. very competitive. <laughs> okay. Well, good luck tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Um, election. Who? Scary. Okay. See, that's the word that comes to my mind We're, right we're now. recording this in at NQC. Uh, in 2016, mm -hmm. so I don't I don't know when it will air, but so that is a big thing right now. So that scary is, is the word that comes. Scary to mind. is the word that comes to my mind because you know the future of our country is in is in the hands of, of really of God, but this election is kind of scary for us. I mean, because you don't know what could happen. Yeah, you don't know. I mean, I yeah. don't know what our government can do and what they can't do, but I just hope and pray that you know God just um, he blesses our country. Yeah, and, as uh, he has in the past. He has, and yeah. I, I don't really worry about who's president because God is still king. So you hey, know what? That's a good one. It's all that matters. Karen Peck. Oh, sweet. <laughs> that's the word I think. But I love her. I mean, I call her Aunt Karen. I told you that. Right. Yeah. So I love my Aunt Karen. She is literally. I mean, I'm not just saying that. I've never seen her be mean in my entire life. 27 years of knowing her, I've never seen her be mean ever. That's something to be said. Yeah, I have always just had great experiences with her. Yeah. And we, I don't see her a lot um, at concerts, but when I do, it's just always, you know, just so pleasant. And it's not so fake. Nice. Right. You know, you yeah. can tell when somebody's like just nice. You know, yeah. She's not fake. It's the yeah. genuine um, kindness that she has. I think that's amazing. Um, I had another one. Where did it go? Oh, tenor. I think, I think David Phelps, but that's because we're, we do Gaither all the time. And so... I mean, I just look at him and think he is incredible. I mean, I've, I don't think I've ever seen him miss a note. You know, he's just really he's good. He's great. But yeah. 
That's what I think of. Well, enough of the word association. Now it's time for the vouch zone. You have a certain (laughs) unspecified amount of time to answer these questions. If you don't get them in the amount of time, I go directly to the next question. Are you ready? This is better than word association. I love this part. I didn't know we were doing this. (laughs) Did I get... Yeah, I got you some. Is this like trivia? Yes, absolutely. Wait, I got to find some for you. You did not put this in the clip notes for your study. No, I didn't. Okay. What percent of people in the world live on less than $1 per day? Live Time. on less than How month. much do large <laughs> ships pay to go through the Panama Canal? $250,000. You cheater. <laughs> what percentage of all photocopier faults are caused by people 5%. sitting on them? How many posts make up, or how many parts make up a Boeing 767? 700. How many types of snakes are found on the island of Tasmania? None. I don't know. <laughs> None. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, going straight to them. <laughs> what percent of people in the world live on less than one dollar per day? You didn't get an answer on that one. So. I'm gonna say twenty. You are such a cheater. I did I'm not like, cheat. Twenty like percent is the correct answer. How much do large ships pay to go through the Panama Canal? Seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Didn't I say that? You said two hundred fifty first, and that was the actual answer. You That's saw, the one I'm going. You with. saw it right the first time yeah. when you looked. What percent of all photocopier faults are caused by people sitting on them? I said five, five. I think. It's 23%. Wow, people sit on... Okay, that's really They do random. sit on photocopiers. They sit on photocopiers. Okay. How many parts make up a Boeing 767? I said around 700 something. 700. It's it's 3,100,000. Oh, I was, I was close. <laughs> <You were. laughs> How many types of snakes are found on the island I of Tasmania? I didn't know this one. I said, I, yeah, it's three. Really, and only all three. of them are deadly poisonous. I believe I hate you know the only kind of good snake is a dead snake for me. Well, it makes sense for me too, pretty much. I woke wife. up with one in my bedroom one time. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Yeah, we had to catch it and trap it, and then Jason ended up keeping it. I don't know As why he kept it. No, he was trying to find out if it was poisonous or not. And then he took it to PetSmart. Like, who knows at PetSmart if it's really poisonous? I mean, those people, they're just there to, like, work, you know, the store. But Jason's like, we'll take it to PetSmart and see if it's poisonous. And the guy was like, oh, no, it's just a garden snake. So we took it back home. I thought, okay, he'll kill it and we'll be done with a nightmare. No, he kept it overnight. And he was like, we'll take care of it tomorrow. I'll go release it somewhere into a lake. The next day, he had it, like, in this little canister and had, like, a little foil where it could breathe. It was gone. Six months later, we had a yard sale, and we were selling the couch in the garage, and the lady was looking at the couch. Guess who grew up into an adult (laughs) and was living in the couch? The snake. Yeah, I freaked out. I told him, I was like, I will never trust you again when it comes to snakes. That's a true story? That's a true story. It was in our couch. My sister's here. She can attest to it. It really happened. It was living in our garage, (laughs) in the couch cushions. (laughs) Well, Okay. <laughs> it's not three kinds of snakes. It's just one kind of snake. And he's not deadly poisonous, but you can go and visit snakes at y'all's house. Yeah. I mean, we don't know if he's poisonous. That's what the guy at PetSmart said. Well, I don't know. That's how a great way to end poison. the interview. That's a great story. I wish I had led with that. That's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful story. Thank you. Thanks for it's joining me your, today. Thank you. It's been so much fun. And where can they catch up with the Neelands? Thenealands.com. Right there. Or Facebook page at the Neelands. Cool. Thanks so much for joining on the couch with Fouch. We'll see you next time. Careful of snakes. Watch out.